In the dark shadows and in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tombs. The order of the Abracast, we are the brave and bold. What shall we say about werewolves? For there are werewolves which run about the villages devouring men and children. As men say about them, they run about in full gallop, injuring men, and are called burr wolf or werewolf. Do you ask me if I know about them right? And I answer yes. They are apparently wolves which catch men and children. And it happens on seven accounts. Hunger, savageness, old age, experience, madness, the devil, and even God. The first happens through hunger, when the wolves find nothing to eat in the woods. And they must come to people and eat men when hunger drives them to it. You will see there it is very cold, and the uh, stags come in search of food up to the villages, and the birds actually into the dining room in search of victuals. And under the second head, wolves eat children through their innate savageness because they are savage. And that is their savageness arises. First, from their condition, wolves which live in cold places are smaller on the account and more savage than other wolves. And secondly, their savageness depends on the season. They are more savage about candle mass than at any other time of the year, and men must be more than on their guard against them than in other times it is in Proverbs. He who seeketh the wolf at candle mass, a peasant on Shrove thir- Tuesday, and a parson in Lent is a man of pluck. Thirdly, their savageness depends on having young. When the wolves have young, they are more savage than when they have not. You see, it is also, a, a, you see, it is so in all beasts, a wild duck, <laughs> when it is young, pults. You will see what an uproar it makes. A cat fights for its young kittens, and the wolves do ditto. Under the third head, the wolves do injury on account of their age. When a wolf is old, it is weak and feeble in its lees, so it can't run fast enough to catch stags, and therefore it rends a man whom it catch uh, whom it can catch easier in the wild than a, than a wild animal. It also tears children and men easier than wild animals because of its teeth. <laughs> For its teeth break off when it is very old, you see it well in old women. <laughs> and then the la- when the last teeth wobble, they have scarcely a tooth left in their head, and they open their mouths for men to feed them with mash and stewed substances. Under the fourth head, the injury uh, the werewolves do arise from experience. It is said that human flesh is far sweeter than other flesh. So when a wolf has tasted human flesh, he desires to taste it again. So he acts like old toppers who then uh, know the beast or the best wine will be put off with inferior quality. And under the fifth head, the injury arises from ignorance. A dog, when it is mad, is also inconsiderate and bites any man. It does not recognize its own lord. And what wolf and what is a wolf but a wild dog? which is a mad and inconsiderate so that it regards no man. And under the sixth head, uh, the injury comes unto the devil who transforms himself and takes on the form of a wolf. And so writes Vincentinius in his Speculum Historale, page 265, and he has taken it from Vallis Maximus in, in the Punic War. When the Romans fought against the men of Africa, when they, uh, ca- when the captain lay asleep, there came a wolf and he drew his sword and carried it off. 
that was a devil in a wolf's form and he uh the like writes william of paris that a wolf will kill and devour children and do the greatest mischief there was a man who had the fantasy that he himself was a wolf but afterwards he was found laying in the wood and he was dead out of sheer hunger And under the seventh head, the injury comes of God's ordinance, for God will sometimes punish certain lands and villages with wolves. So we read of Elisha, and when Elisha wanted to go up to the mountain out of Jericho, and some naughty boys made a mock of him and said, Oh, bald head, step up, oh, glossy pate, step up, and what happened? He cursed them and came two bears out of the desert and tore about 42 of the children. That was God's ordinance. That was God's ordinance. And the like we read of a prophet who would set at naught and commands he had received of God, for he was persuaded to eat bread at the house of another. And as he went home, he rode upon his ass and uh, came a lion which slew him and that left the ass alone. That was God's ordinance. Therefore must a man turn to God when he brings wild beasts to him to do mischief. And the same brutes may he not bring now or evermore. Amen. It was the sermon of the werewolf. Dr. Johann Geller uh, written in 1508. The Abercast. Occult. History. Conspiracy. And violence. Werewolf. Werewolf? There. What? There, wolf. There, castle. Why are you talking that way? I thought you wanted to. No, I don't want to. Suit yourself. I'm easy. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in, I'm John, welcome to the Sermon of the Wolf, I'm the head lycanthrope in charge for the evening, <laughs> um, I'm John Towers, so, we're so, man I gotta tell you something though, about that clip <laughs> that I played, Terry Gar was the hottest bitch on the planet in Young Frankenstein, I am sorry, I remember <laughs> hitting puberty and watching young frankenstein on a vhs tape over and over and over again so i'm like we're starting our deep dive into werewolves this week it's a six-part series the sermon of the wolf is a spinoff of my main podcast called the abercast so we have a lot to get through it so we're just gonna get into it okay the um our feature book for this evening is human animals by frank Hamel, which I think is, a, I think she's a female. I don't, I don't know. I've seen her reference as Miss Frank Hamel before, so I don't know. When you're getting into these, I mean, this the book was written in 1915, so I just feel like saying Frank Hamel is okay. Human animals, you guys will be able to find it and cross check me real easy. Uh, we're gonna start in chapter nine, which is the werewolf in myth and legend. <clears throat> An extraordinary story about a werewolf comes from Ansbach in 1685. 
the supposed incarnation of a dead Burgo master of that town was uh, said to be Burger Mice. Burger it, sh- it says Burger Master, but they're called Burger Meisters. It's like it's a mayor. You're the Meister of the Burg that you're living in. <clears throat> I had lived in Germany for a while. So <laughs> it's said to be ravishing the neighboring county in the form of a wolf devouring cattle and uh as well as women and children at the last uh the ferocious beast was caught and slaughtered and its carcass was encased in a suit of flesh colored sir cloth while its head and its face were adorned with a chestnut-colored wig and a long white beard. The animal's snout had been cut off, and a mask resembling the dead Burgo, Burgermeister's features had been substituted. This effigy was hanged, and its skin was stuffed and put in a museum where it was pointed out as proof of the actual existence of werewolves. This incident prove, appears to prove in the belief of werewolves. It had been shaken to that date, but it has never been fully eradicated, and it's only natural that the theme which had such worldwide credence should occur again and again in mythology and literature. It is uh, dealt with in the story of the festival of the god Zeus, which was held every nine years on the Wolf Mountain in Arcadia, in Arcadia et Ego. During the banquet of man, having tasted a flowing bowl in which human and animal flesh were mixed, he uh, was turned into a wolf and remained a wolf for nine years if he had abstained from eating human flesh. In the interval, he would become once more a man. The tradition appears to have originated in the existence of a society of cannibal wolf worshippers and a member of which perhaps represented the sacred animal for the nine years in succession. Uh, This compares to some degree the practices of the human leopard society, which is uh, of comparatively recent origin. And Lycione, a king of Arcadia and father of Callisto, was uh, turned into a wolf because he offered human sacrifices to Jupiter. Or in the virgin, uh, the (laughs) virgin... Ah, uh, Freudian slip. Or the ver- <laughs> the version given by Ovoid, Ovid because he tried to murder Jupiter, who was his guest. Others believe that Lycione is the constellation of the wolf, and that in him were the united qualities of wolf, king, and constellation. Pliny points out that the or- origin of transformation into wolves was due to Evanthes, a Greek author of good repute who tells a story of Antheus, the Arcadian. A lot of Arcadians here, a member of whose family is chosen by lot and then taken to a certain lake in the district across which he swims and is changed into a wolf for a space of nine years. So to, oh boy, here we go, Dementius, during a sacrifice of human victims, tasted the entrails of a boy who had been slaughtered upon which he turned into a wolf. But ten years later, he was victorious in the pugilistic contest at the Olympic Games. It was a boxing match. He was a fucking boxer. I'll be your shadow boxer, baby. Or, Mama said knock you out. <clears throat> the following quaint story is taken from Petronius. Being told by one Niceros at a banquet given by Trimalacchio. It happened that my master was gone to Koopa to dispose of some secondhand goods, and I took the opportunity and persuaded our guest to walk with me to our fifth milestone. He was a valiant soldier and a sort of a grim water-drinking Pluto, about a cock crow, 
when the moon was shining as bright as midday, we came amongst the mountains. Uh, my friend began addressing himself to the stars, and I was rather in the mood to sing or to count them. And when I turned to look at him, lo, he had already stripped himself and laid his clothes near him. My heart was in my nostrils, and I stood like a dead man. But he made a mark around his clothes, and on a sudden became a wolf. Do not think I jest, I would not lie, for any man's estate, but to return to what I am saying. When he became a wolf, he began howling and fled into the woods. At first, I hardly knew where I was, and afterwards, when uh, I went to take up his clothes, they were turned to stone. Who then was more likely to die from fear than I? Yet I drew my sword, and cutting the air right and left, came thus to my sweetheart's house. And when I entered the court the courtyard, I was like to breath my last perspiration poured from my neck, and my eyes were dim, and my Melissa met me to ask me where I had been so late, and I said, I had... You only come sooner, you might have helped us, for a wolf came to the farm and worried our cattle. We had not yet the best of the joke, for all he escaped as our servant ran a lance through his neck. And when I heard this, I could not doubt what had happened. And as the day dawned, I ran home and uh, as fast as... I ran home as fast as a robbed innkeeper. And when I came to the spot where uh, the clothes had been turned to stone, I could find nothing except blood. And when I got home, I found my friend, the soldier in bed, bleeding at the neck like an ox and a doctor dressing his wound. And I knew there was there he was a turn skin, nor would I ever have broken bread with him again. No, not if you had killed me. The expression turn skin or turncoat is a translation of the Latin versepolis, a term used to describe a werewolf. Werewolf. <clears throat> this reminds me of this guy. So uh, when I was a kid, I would read the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> you know, I'm a Marvel dude. So I'd read Incredible Hulk. An Incredible Hulk would like rip all of his clothes up and stuff when he would transform and he would go and fight tanks in the desert or whatever. And uh, when he woke up the next morning, some he had a kid named Rick Jones who always brought his clothes back to him. He would bring him new clothes. Like Rick Jones must have had a, just an army sized duffel bag just full of spare clothes for the Hulk. <clears throat> Anyhow, he was always there giving him clothes. And I was always like, that's a good friend I had. So in the, not in the movies, in the comic book, it, you know, because it's a, it's all a Cold War metaphor. So in the movies, um, Bruce Banner was, he was making a, a version of a nuclear bomb using gamma radiation. And they were on like the Alamogordo test range or something. And, uh, he had seen that there was a teenager. He was out on his Jeep playing a, playing a guitar or harmonica or something just hippie you know oblivious to the universe so bruce banner ran out to him and pushed him in a trench just as this gamma bomb was exploding and so he saved uh rick jones's life and he took the brunt of the gamma irradiation himself for some reason as interesting as a dynamic that is they always cut that out of these movies instead they make them like trying to cure cancer or trying to make like a super soldier serum or something i always thought the dynamic about the guy cursed because he saved this fucking stupid hippie was always was always a, a greater dynamic to have you know, he, now this kid feels like he's got to take care of this Hulk. I don't know. I guess in some way, thematically, it makes sense to ramble on about the Incredible Hulk in an episode about werewolfism in myth. Uh, because, I mean, really, what besides, really, the Hulk is a sort of werewolf, except being, you know, 
magically induced or being a, a slave to the a lunar cycle, which we're going to talk a lot about as we get into this thing. He's uh, it, it's his emotions it, in some way. It's like a cross between a werewolf and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is definitely also a werewolf story. <clears throat> I might have had too much of these already. Another story in which the human being suffers from the wound inflicted of a werewolf concerns a fine lady of saint Gorge who used to wander at night in the forest in the shape of a wolf. One night she caught her paw in a trap set by hunters, and this put an end to her nocturnal wanderings. <laughs> we have a whole thing coming up on just female werewolf stories, by the way, which is fast it's fascinating and afterwards she had kept a glove on the hand that had been trapped so to conceal the mutilation of uh two of her fingers Eliphas levi the occultist had endeavored to explain the sympathetic condition between the man and his element uh, or his animal uh presentment and Levi says, we must speak here of lycanthropy or the nocturnal transition of men into wolves. History so well substantiated, the skeptical science has had recourse into furious maniacs and to masquerading as animals for expl exp explanations. But such hypotheses are puerile and they explain nothing. And let us seek elsewhere the solution of the mystery and establish first that no person has been killed by a werewolf except by suffocation without infusion of blood and without wounds. Secondly, um, that werewolves, though tracked, hunted, and even maimed, they have never killed on the spot. And third, the person suspected of these transformations have always been found at home after their pursuit of the werewolf, more or less wounded or sometimes dying, but invariably in their natural form. We're going to see this over and over again. We have spoken on the sidereal body, which is the mediator between the soul and and the material organism. The body remains awake very often while the other is asleep. And by thought transports itself, all spaces which universal magnetism opens up to it and thus lengthens without breaking the sympathetic chain, attaching it to the heart and the brain. And that is why there is danger in waking up dreaming persons with a start. For the shock may sever the chain at a blow and cause instantaneous death. <laughs> the form of our sidereal body is comfortable in the habitual condition of our thoughts. And the long run, it is bound to modify the features of the material organism. And let us now be bold enough to assert that a werewolf is nothing more than the sidereal body of a man whose savage and sanguinary instincts are represented by the wolf who whilst his phantoms is wandering abroad sleeps painfully in his bed and dreams that he is a ver veritable wolf what renders this wolf visible to most somnambulistic overexcitement caused by the fear of those who see it or their disposition more particularly among simple country folk to place themselves in direct com communication with the astral light, which is the common medium of dreams and visions. The blows inflicted on the werewolf really wound the sleeper by the odic and sympathetic congestions of the astral light and by the correspondence of the immaterial with the material body. Unquote. The wound dealt with the werewolf being reproduced in the human being is emphasized by an incident which occurred in about 1588 in a tiny village situated in the mountains of 
<laughs> Orvangi. Orvangi. <clears throat> I should get one of those fucking Babel apps so I can learn to f- pronounce this shit. A gentleman was <clears throat> gazing one evening from the widow the windows of his castle when he saw a hunter he knew passing on his way to the chase. Calling him, he begged that on his return he would report what luck he had had. The hunter, after uh, pursuing his way, was attacked by a large wolf and fired his gun without hitting the animal. When he struck at it with his hunting knife, severing one of its paws, which he picked up and put into his knapsack, the wounded wolf ran quickly into the forest, and the hunter reached the castle and told his friend of his strange fight with the wolf. And to emphasize his story, he opened his knapsack, in which, to his horror and surprise, he saw not a wolf's paw, as he had expected, but a hand of a woman which had a gold ring on one of the fingers. The owner recognized the ring as belonging to his wife, and hastened to the kitchen to question her. He found her with one arm hidden beneath the folds of her shawl and he drew it aside and saw she had lost her hand. She then confessed that it was she who was in the form of a wolf and attacked the hunter and was arrested and burnt to death afterwards at Rayon. In another uh, variation of this werewolf story, the human being retains a material object acquired by his animal replica and is freed thereby from his obsession. A man who was <clears throat> from a man who, from his childhood, had been a werewolf, were returning one night fr- from a merrymaking. Observed that f- that the hour was at hand when the transformation usually took place. Given the. <clears throat> Giving the reins to his wife, he got out of the cart and said, If anyone comes to thee, strike at it with my apron. And then he went away. A few minutes later, the poor woman was attacked by a wolf. And remembering what her husband had told her, she struck at it with her apron. And the animal tore uh, out a piece and ran off. Presently, the man himself returned, holding in his mouth a torn fragment of the apron, and the wife cried out in terror, Good Lord, man, why thou art a werewolf? Thank thee, mother, replied he. But now I am free. And after this incident, he kept his human form until the day of his death. In William of Palermo, the old romance known as William and the Werewolf translated from the French at the command of Sir Humphrey D. Bohun about A.D. 1350, uh, 1350. <laughs> the Werewolf appears as a sort of guardian angel, the brother <clears throat> of the king Ap- Apulia. Envious of the heir apparent, bribes two women to murder the king's son, and while the boy William is at play, as a werewolf runs off with him, swims across the straits of... This is the second time we've seen someone swimming. This swimming is important, I guess. The straits of Messina, and carries him into a forest near Rome where it takes care of him and provides him with food. The werewolf, in reality, is Alfonso, heir to the Spanish throne, who has been transformed by his stepmother, Queen Bronda, Brondi, who appears, or who desires her own son, Brondis. Oh. She desires her own son, Brondis, to wear the crown of Spain. If you stop too much or put a comma where it doesn't belong, that gets dicey fast. 
the werewolf embraces the king's son with uh, his four feet and so familiar with him to the king's son. It pleases him uh, whatever the beast does for him. And while the werewolf seeks provender, a coward finds William and takes him to his hut where the emperor meets him when out hunting, placing him behind on his horse and takes him to Rome and gives him in charge of his daughter, Melano, Mel. Melior to be her page. William and Melior fall in love with one another and to avoid the emperor's wrath devise an escape disguised in the skins of white bears helped by Melior's friend, friend Alexandrine Alexandrian probably the, uh, when Melior asked whether she makes a bold bear Alexandrian answers yes madam you are a grisly ghost enough to look ferocious together the lovers wander out of the garden on all fours and make <laughs> imagine this sight <laughs> way to the forest to hide in the den and meanwhile the werewolf has followed William's fortunes and finding the wanderers in need, he sets on a harmless passerby who carries provisions. And seizing the bread and boiled beef out of his bag, he lays it before the lovers and runs off, attacking another traveler, securing two flagoons of wine. With that being said, I need break. Hey, uh, last month I made an appearance on a couple different uh, podcast. So I want to give a shout out to them. Uh, women behind the veil. Uh, I was their first male uh, guest host on there last month. Um, it, it was a great thing. They do a show that's all about kick ass uh, women in history and they get into a, a historical uh, females and uh, females of the occult and and uh, females ideals of the occult. They did a great episode on Kali and the Black Madonna. I actually like learned some stuff stuff from them, so it was fun. We did uh we talked all about Boudica and Boudica's um uh, revolt against the Roman Empire. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. So go check them out. And then um, I was also uh. Uh, I was also on magic, magic and mediums. Uh, we were on there. Uh, she asked me to come on to talk about ceremonial magic. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, they, she does a podcast that's all about all different forms of um, mad magic and uh, psychic abilities and all that stuff. So I had I had a lot of fun going on there and talking about ceremonial magic with her. So you can find the, all, both of those podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, I'm sure you'll be able to, to locate them. Um, while I have you, don't forget to go to subscribestar.com. Uh, you um for exclusive audio content there's 14 ep 14 exclusive episodes you can only find on subscribe star right now don't forget to hit up abercast.com there's a bunch of great stuff including a shop we're now uh going to be selling uh, vessels of the art which are these um uh big mason jars with the uh logo on them with the abercast logo on them so check that out check out our facebook page our youtube and don't forget the this month the american sermon is turning into the sermon of the wolf we're doing a great six part deep dive into lycanthropy and werewolfism over there so if you're interested in that shit i ask you to go check it out thank you guys All right, where was I? I needed my two flagoons. Being pursued, the lovers escaped Palermo, led always by the werewolf Alfonso, half-brother 
to Brodini's Brodinus, maybe, who was destined by Melanor's father to become his son-in-law. William does battle with the proposed suitor and still and still helped by the werewolf whose symbol is painted on his shield. Overcomes his rival, takes the king and queen of Spain prisoner, and refuses to let them go until Queen Brew, a brood <laughs> promises to transform the rightful heir from a wolf back into a human being. Unless she disenchants you, she shall be burnt, he says forcibly. And Brondi takes her stepson, the wolf, into a private chamber and draws forth a magic ring with a stone in it that is proof against all witchcraft and binds it with red silk thread around the wolf's neck. And then she takes a book out of the casket and reads in it a long time until he turns into a man and the werewolf is delighted, but apologizes to his stepmother for having no clothes on. And she commands him to choose who shall fetch his clothes. And he answers that he will take his, that he will take his attire and the order of knighthood from the worthiest man alive, who is William of Palermo. And William being called enters the chamber where he sees a man who is an utter stranger and is only satisfied when he hears Alfonso's explanation. He says to him, Hey man, yo bro, I am the werewolf who saved you from many perils. <laughs> William and Melanor are married and ends happily and William becomes the emperor of Rome. So in this way, William William is the Rick Jones to Alfonso's Hulk. You see what I'm saying? You see why it's a, a myth? Everyone always says comic books are, are the American mythology. And a lot of times I throw shade on that because mythologies end. <laughs> comic books are more like soap operas sometimes. It's where they never end. Anyhow, in a case like this, you can see Rick Jones, William, Alfonso, the Hulk. I think it's an apt. Uh, I think it's an, an apt analogy. <clears throat> the Bretons give uh, this name of oh my god, Billa Chevrolet, Billa Chevrolet to the werewolf or werefox, which throws itself upon the hunter's horse and terrorizing, and terrorizing it, calling Garwal by the Normans and Bisglero. Uh, is supposed to be a wizard. And if in olden times an unknown lady offered food to the hunters at the moment the animal appeared, she was thought to be a witch. Marie de France and her Lady of Villes Crevet. Villes Crevet, I was that's how I was pronouncing it before. Villes Crevet. Maybe uh, use the idea of the werewolf. And again, in the case of the animal has, uh, has no savage instincts except against his enemies, a faithless wife and her lover, a gallant knight of Brittany, a favorite with the King weds, a fair lady whom he loves tenderly. Only one cloud darkens the wife's horizon. Her husband leaves her inevitably three days a week, and she does not know where he goes. One day, she has the temerity to ask him, and he warns her that that information may be dangerous. But when she pleads with him, he says, <clears throat> Learn then that I become a werewolf during my absence, and I go into the forest, and I hide in the thickets and seek my prey. But, my dear, tell me whether you take off your clothes, says the wife, or whether you keep them on. I am naked when the transformation occurs, madam. And where do you put your clothes? Oh, boy. <laughs> you can already see what's happening here. <laughs> Rick Jones 
takes my clothes and he brings them back to me <laughs> when I'm done with my transformation. I must not tell you because if I were seen when I take them off, I should remain a werewolf for the rest of my life. So all you guys that are fucking around on your wives, try that. <laughs> try that. I can't tell you. <laughs> Because if anybody knows, I will be. I will. Ha I will not be able to shake this curse. I can only recover human form at the moment because um, the moment I put them on again. After after that, you will not be surprised if I say no more. But she urges him to tell her, and finally he says that he hides his clothes under a bush near an old stone cross, the corner of the chapel. And there he puts them on when he wishes to resume his original shape. <clears throat> so, okay, I think that we should put a pin in this whole story because this is going to come up a, a lot. This story has, it's in, it encapsulates a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about in part five. We see uh, a cross. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to. Okay. Just remember this story when you hear in a couple weeks when, when we listen to part five. Frightened by his awful behavior, the wife decides to live with him no more and immediately sends for a young man who is in love with her. He tells him the story and enjoins him, <laughs> enjoins him to go and take away her husband's clothes. He's going to trap him in a dog. He's going to trap him in wolf form. Sounds counterintuitive. Thus, she betrays her husband to the werewolf and uh, who does not return and is given up for dead. And sometimes l later, she marries her false lover. About a year later, the king goes on a hunting expedition in the forest, and there he comes across the werewolf, and the hounds immediately take up the scent and give chase the whole day long. Wounded by the hunters and wearing nigh unto his death, the wolf seizes, seizes the bridle of the king's horse and licks his majesty's foot. The king, in great fear, calls his companions to look at the extraordinary wild beast that is capable of this humble action. And he refuses to allow this wolf to be slaughtered and takes it back in his train to the castle. And the wolf lives in great comfort like a domestic pet and harms no one. Presently at a function, uh, a, fun a great function is held at the court and the werewolf's former wife comes there with her new husband and a monument of the, the moment of the wolf sets his eye on him he springs at his throat and would surely have killed him if not the king beaten him off with a whip and the rest of the gentlemen's visit the wolf is kept under strict discipline told you it sounded like a bad idea sometimes afterwards the king accompanied by his faithful wolf pays a visit to the lady and when the animal springs at her ferociously and bites off her nose and the courtiers say that the matter must be inquired into for the wolf only turns savage when in the presence of this lady and her new husband the king decides to have the couple arrested and the <laughs> <laughs> the couple arrested and the lady has to confess what had happened, saying that she thinks the werewolf must be her transformed husband. After hearing her story, the king orders the werewolf's clothes to be placed where he can get them privately. And after waiting outside the room in which the metamorphosis is to take place for some time, he enters to find the former knight, his old friend, whom he thought dead, lying quietly asleep. And he restores all his honors and all and his faithless wife chased out of the kingdom, faithless, faithless and noseless wife chased out of the kingdom in company with her false lover and their daughters are born without noses as punishment for the wicked fraud practiced on Sir Werewolf. Olas Magnus declared that along with the inhabitants of Prussia, Levo oh, this... This Livonian werewolf story is famous. <clears throat> Almost every one of these old werewolf books we, we're going to be looking at cites this Livonian, this Livonian werewolf business. So, Olus Magnus declared 
that although the inhabitants of Prussia, Livonia, and Lithuania suffer considerably from the depredations of wolves as far as their cattle are concerned, their losses are not so serious in this quarter as they suffer at the hands of the werewolves on Christmas. Remember the sermon at the beginning Kent, where he says candle mass is the most dangerous time if you're dealing with a werewolf. On Christmas Eve, multitudes of werewolves gather at a certain spot and band together to attack human beings and animals. They besiege isolated houses and break in the doors and devour every living thing. They burst into beer cellars and they empty the casks, thus providing their humans uh, their human tastes. A ruined castle near Corland appears to have been their favorite meeting place, where thousands congregate in order to test their agility. And if any of them fail to bound over the castle wall, they are slain by the others, as they are uh, considered in that case to be incompetent for the work at hand, getting over boundaries. Remember, remember that. It's so important. It is believed Then a messenger in the person of the lame youth is sent around to the neighborhoods to call the followers of the devil to a general conclave. Those who are reluctant to attend the meetings are beaten with iron scourges, and the gathering is assembled and the human forms vanish and the whole multitude become wolves. The troops follow their leader firmly convinced in their imagination they are transformed into wolves and this sorcery lasts for 12 days at the expiration of this period the human forms are resumed so this is an interesting point i got to bring up it's not really in this it's not really in this chapter of this book well it's not cuz it's not um but our modern idea of the werewolf being linked to the moon is a late addition. It's a late addition. Like we just listened to this one story where a guy disappeared three days out of the week to become a wolf. And here these, uh, this sorcery lasts for 12 days <clears throat> and you're like, no, 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 no. It'll, it lasts for a week every month. Well, that's a late addition. And we're going to get into that specifically in, in part four. Um, so just take that into consideration. I just like, I'm just feeling that I'm afraid that people are going to be like too synced into the werewolf mythology that we know right now when I'm clearly talking about tell, I'm clearly telling stories from like the 15, 16, 17, 1800s. <clears throat> what is interesting because, okay, so we did talk about earlier we talked about the werewolves being concerned with constellations so that's one that's one thing <clears throat> um the werewolves that were concerned with the constellations at the very beginning of the episode is different than being linked into the lunar cycle just stick with me and we're going to get to the lunar cycle business but because we're talking about like this sorcery of 12 days and we just got done talking about 3 days a week i just felt like it was worth mentioning that this lunar cycle business is, or it's late. It's very late. And we're like, we're going to get all, we're going to get all into it. It's such a great, it's going to be such a great episode. Referring back to it. Let's get back to it. Referring further to the Cortland werewolves. It is said of them that Satan holds them in his net in three ways. Firstly, they execute certain depredations such as mangling cattle in their human shapes but in such a state of hallucination that they believe themselves to be wolves and are regarded as such by others in a like predicament. Although not true werewolves, they hunt in packs. And secondly, they are their bodies lying asleep and sent forth in their imaginations in a dream that they believe they have injured the cattle, but that, Uh, It is the devil who does this. It is suggested to them in their thoughts. And thirdly, that the evil one induces real werewolves to do the horrid deeds, but impress in scenes so vividly 
on the mind of the sleeper that he considers himself to be guilty of the act. So there are great discourses of this, this exact, <clears throat> this exact, these three exact things in the Malefic Maleficarium where it, it's almost like it seems almost like a debate when you're reading it. The guy writing it down is like, look, these are the three options. <laughs> like it's either uh basically it's like it's like either they think this is going on or they're glamored to believe they're werewolves or it's the devil taking the form of these werewolves. There's a lot of interesting thing in that Malefic Malificarium which you talked about in the American Sermon um uh that speak exactly right to that art right to these three arguments the following stories exemplify these conditions uh the first is told of a man who when starting on a journey saw a wolf attacking one of his sheep, and he fired at it and fled wounded into the thicket <clears throat> and on his return he was told that he had fired at one of his tenants called michael michael probably here's to michael Michael's wife, when questioned, said that her husband had been sowing rye. He's either making Rubens or whiskey, one of the two, and uh, had asked her if he could get some meat for a feast. Okay, so it was Rubens. He said on no account was he uh, to steal from the master's flock as he was well guarded by dogs, and Mickle ignored her advice. So maybe it was whiskey and he, <laughs> he attacked the sheep. Uh, he came home limping in a bad, uh, badly in a passion. He fell on his own horse and had torn its throat. It had seemed as though he was bewitched or in a trance. In 1684, the curious incident occurred when a man who had gone hunting in a forest at dusk in a pack of wolves have rushed towards him. And he leveled his gun with the intention of aiming at the leader of the a voice arose from their midst saying, Don't fire, sir, for no good will come of it. And then the phantom pack rushed onwards and he saw it no more. The third story is about a man wolf who was accused of sorcery for the most flagrant kind, finding it difficult in getting evidence against the criminal. The judges sent a peasant to his cell who was charged with the unpleasant task of forcing a confession. The prisoner was told that he might avenge himself upon another peasant to whom he owed a grudge by destroying his cow secretly, and if possible, when he in the shape of a wolf. And after much persuasion, the supposed werewolf undertook to carry out the suggested plan. The next morning, the cow in question was found to be fearfully mangled, and the strange part of the story is this, that although the witness were set to watch the man in his cell, they swore unanimously that he had never left it and he had passed the whole night in his a deep sleep only at one time making a slight movement of his head hands and feet so that was the devil taking the form of the wolf just as the man who thinks he changes into a wolf suffers from lycanthropy so the one who believes he changes into a dog suffering from caneanthropy and those who change into a kind from bo okay so people change into a cow from boanthropy oh no maybe it's a pig i don't know what a kind is boanthropy all right so i have i need to research that i guess boring anthropy um every part of the world chooses a special animal as being the most suitable for disguise and naturally enough the animal kingdom and uh which one is common to the district thus we find the tiger chosen in india in asia the bear for northern europe the lion the leopard and the hyena for africa there's a lot of great hyena stuff that i left out 
the hyena stuff is really cool. The jaguar for Southern America and so forth. Many, many superstitions around the tiger besides being the abode of the soul of a dead man. It may be the temporary or even permanent form of a living human being. In India, it is said that a certain root brings upon the metamorph- metamorphosis. And then any other root is used for the antidote. And central Java powers of transformation are believed to be hereditary and no shame is attached to it. If the word tiger is looked upon as a friendly animal and if his friends call upon him by name, he behaves like a domestic pet and is believed to guard the fields. In the Malay Peninsula, faith in the genuine were tiger persists and is thought they're also the soul of a dead wizard enters the animal's body during the process of transformation. The corpse laid, uh, the corpse is laid in the forest and beside it, a supple, uh, a supply, huh, God damn it. A supply of rice and water is placed sufficient for seven days in which time the transmigration resulting from the compact made by the Pawawanga's ancestors is complete. The ceremony is gone through by the son of the Pawang, uh, who wishes to succeed his father in tiger's form. This is like the black fucking panther. Where's your heart shaped herb? That's about it. I'm just going to end it there. This has been the Sermon of the Wolf. Part one. Thank you, guys. All right, it's John. Hey, uh, swing on over to subscribestar.com slash Abercast. Um, you can find like 14 exclusive episodes over there, but along with a whole bunch of other good good stuff. We have one tier right now. It's the... Um, the uh fellow i guess or the apprentice i can't remember what it is it's just three dollar tier you get access to everything um that is up there currently right now so go on over and support the show don't forget to go to abercast.com you can find our social media links there you could sign into the mailing list when you sign into the mailing list you get uh graphic elements you get a link to graphic elements that have to do with the show so worksheets notes Graphic elements. Uh, we have an episode of the Kabbalah coming up this month, so you can find all like the Tree of Life map and um, the different uh, triangle, the three different triangles that we're talking about, uh, the lightning bolt path through the different Sephiroths. All that stuff is there. Um, while you're there, please check on some comic books or graphic novels. Also, we're trying a new thing. Uh, we have a shop opened up at abercast.com. I have a couple of vessels of the art. Um, left over from the giveaways last month and some people were reached out to me and asked me about they were like fuck the giveaways can I just buy one so yes now you can if that was a question that you had just stop on over at the shop I have a few on hand and I have an order in for more so go ahead and act now I don't know how long we're going to keep doing it so um, that's it check out the Facebook page uh, it's super easy to find it's just uh, the Abercast or Abercast um, and also uh, if you're if you spend a lot of time on YouTube, you might want to check out our YouTube channel on um, that. And just a quick reminder: the American Sermon, which is a spinoff podcast, is becoming the Sermon of the Wolf. We're doing a six-part deep dive into werewolfism. So, if you weren't interested in the American bullshit, uh, but you might be interested in werewolf bullshit, uh, just go ahead and uh, and find it. Uh, most places that uh, good podcasts can be found, we're still working on Spotify and. Uh, that, that those sorts of places but it's on itunes and stitcher and all those little all the different apps and all that stuff so thanks thanks